I'll be right with you. <clears throat> is um, what is your uh, what is your guilty pleasure album? Um, well, I would say I like Wild Cherry. Play that funky music. That oh. is one that I cannot resist, and that's one of my earliest <laughs> records. But also Terry, Terry's sitting here and he's going, but what about ABBA? You love ABBA. And it's true. I cannot resist ABBA. <laughs> In fact, I serenaded him once to a uh, Fernando. Oh, you did? Come on now. <laughs> so have you seen, have you seen their new uh, project that, 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 that they've done? It's all like, no, uh, it. yeah, it's all like, uh, what is it like? Immersive and stuff like that. I heard about <laughs> it, but I have not seen it. Is it great? I just heard about it. My manager was involved with some of the, uh, oh, some of the organizers. I'm yet to see it, but I Yeah. And he was so, telling me about that. Yeah. So I was thinking, you know, just on the same, uh, along the same lines, you know, I did this. Let me give an example. Uh, my question is, so example, I, uh, for about two weeks ago, I sang the national anthem at a rodeo. And I was the only black dude there. And it was just like, you know, strong accents and just everything. I felt so out of place, but at the same time, I didn't. But is there a situation where you've had, you've been in a situation like that in a musical setting where you kind of felt out of place, but you kind of maybe, you know, learned some things along the way? Yeah, you know, this is uh, a little weird, probably not at all what you expected, but I, so back when I was acting, I always, you know, you have to have a voice that can project. And my, I've always had a really wimpy voice. And so uh, I took a singing for non-singers class. Wow. Only, only the people, like there was someone who had a PhD in opera in the class. So, I mean, I really do not sing. Like I sing like, you know, Elaine from Seinfeld dances. Like I do not sing. So yeah, that I was, it was horrifying and you had to get up and sing. I sang a Coldplay song, but I didn't even know like where, you know, the, you know, they had an accompanist on the piano. It was, it was absolutely one of the most mortifying but empowering things I ever did. And people in the class, I mean, they were really, really good. You know, they, non-singers, but amazing people. You know, some of them were better than others, but you have a PhD in, uh, opera I'm pretty sure you're a singer um so she should not have been in that class I really was a non-singer and it's, there was dead silence when I was done and the teacher goes wow you really jumped off a cliff with that one so it was obviously very bad but um cool, man. How do you say that? <laughs> I was empowered you know I was like I could do anything after this and people in the yeah. class were very very supportive because they were all okay. like that took courage but uh, yeah, so I would say that's what that's yeah. one that definitely uh, I learned something from. Just oh, do it, awesome. and feel the fear, and do it anyway. Okay, let's let's go let's go to uh, twenty year old you. Okay, two years ago, right? Let's go back <laughs> to twenty year old you, right? And I want you to tell me something that you uh, uh, some kind of advice that you would give to yourself. Right now, see, everyone does it the opposite way around, where they're like, what would 20 year old you say? What advice would 20 year old you say to you today? Ah, that's a good question. Um, that's almost like your kid giving you advice today. Like what would your 20 year old advice say to you today in this day and age? I think I would say stay fearless because I was definitely fearless back in the day. And you, over time, you know, I do think you, especially with acting, you know, like so much rejection, you know, with music, it's, you know, you're putting yourself out there and you're getting shot down most of the time. And uh, that can affect you, but- And this comparison with other actors, yeah, right? Yeah, oh God, yeah, that's awful. And especially as you're like not 25 anymore. Yeah, that's <laughs> horrifying. But um, yeah, I would say uh, stay fearless and just, even if you feel the fear, do it anyway. There's a great book called Feel, feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And Ooh. I always love that book. I love that. Yeah, I love that whole fear, you know, because it's, I noticed that it's like, we could probably do that a lot. You know, sometimes we look back and like, we can always talk about all oh, the things that we didn't know and the things that we sucked at and all that. And now I know better. 
But I really, the reason why I ask is that I just think that there's so much we can still learn from the younger us. Like we were fearless, man. We, we, yeah. we, we wouldn't take no for an answer. You know what exactly. I mean? We'd like, let's go. And then, you know, years later, we look back at ourselves and we're like, mm, maybe I don't want to do that. I'm set in stone. I don't want to change my spots. I don't want to, right, right, right. And like, exactly. you know, I, I believe that we can just be just as fearless as we were uh, at 20. I believe that we are still just as young, just as hot, just as fly as we were back then. The only difference is we don't, we don't believe it. We don't say it out loud enough. Because when you yeah. look at those boys from Aerosmith, they're still saying it. <laughs> totally. Right? Why, why That's can't we? Point. You know what I mean? They're grandpa and grandpa's still killing it on stage. You know what I mean? So why can't we do that with whatever it is that we're still doing right now? I think it's all just perception where we just think, well, we get to an age and then we, we can't do that anymore. And I, I just, that's, that's my little platform where I'm like, look, I'm 51 years old, right? No, no, don't look at black, don't crack, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the wild berry juices that I use and everything. But I, 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 I'm still doing splits on stage. And stuff I like saw that, you. Right? And I, it hurts sometimes, but you know, I just say, people are like, why are you 51, still doing splits on stage? You got sick, I got eight kids. And my kids are just like, dad, we, you, you just feel like you're a kid. And I'm like, that's the best thing I could have got. Best comment I could have got from my kids because I believe that that's what keeps me young. When I start talking old, then I get off. When I start talking young, then I stay young. And it's, I think it's all a mental thing, right? Can you totally. give us some advice because you are totally that you're like, you're like this, in, you're like this child that's encapsulated in, in, in like a, it, you know, in like a seasoned, you know what I mean, soul. And how do you keep that? How do you keep that child like? I mean, look at that smile, everyone. That, that's not fake. That's like a, that's like a genuine, youthful smile. And I, and I believe that it doesn't happen by accident. You're is good for my anything, ego. <laughs> is there anything you can tell me about that? Like, what just keeps you, what keeps you waking up? What keeps you motivated? I don't like to be bored. I cannot be bored. That is how we are here today with Hookist. That is how everything, I mean, I used to work in the film industry. I was a camera person. I was acting. I, you know, did fashion week. I got a master's at a very old age in energy and environmental conflict. I do not like to be bored. And I think once you start getting bored, that's when you get old. Cause oh my it's gosh. Terrible. I love that. Cause if you notice, you just switched it around. Like if you notice most people, they say ADD, right? And then they make it sound like a bad thing, right? Yeah. But you just said, you just used that word and, and flipped it around and you said, it's not ADD. I just don't want to be bored. That's yeah. Like, I love that. I love That's it. The coolest way of saying, don't diss that. Don't diss those three letters, you know? Embrace your ADD. It can be a blessing where it keeps me moving. It keeps me rolling. It keeps me moving on to the next thing. Uh, you know, I had this experience where um, when I was, uh, I, I don't know if you ever had this, but especially when I was, I used to be in a boy band when I was younger for my sins. I was in a boy I band. Remember. I remember. And I was, I had the worst experiences in the 12, 15 years I was in this boy band. And I look back now and I regret it so much. You know why? Because I never, I never enjoyed the journey. Like, let me give an example. I always thought, if I get on that TV show, then we made it, then everything's good. And I get on the TV show, I was like, wah, wah, wah. then I, I was like, if I get on that radio show that's national and everyone can hear my voice, then I'm like, then I'm done, I'm good. And I get it, it's like, wah, wah, wah. So I spent my whole boy band years chasing stuff and never enjoying it. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, I, I wanted to try and like for now it's like I'm gonna make it about the journey not the destination exactly. I spent so many of my years thinking if I make this destination even just as simple as saying when I get married then my life is good or you know what I mean when I have the divorce then it's gonna be better or when you know what I'm saying we're always saying but I'm starting to realize it has nothing to do with what's happening outside us Yes. It's like, I've been right. trying to just enjoy me, enjoy what's in here. So every project that I do now, 
I don't see it as as um as the be all, as the, the the end. Like with with her kids, that's what I love about what we did. I did with you guys. With like you know, you um, a friend of yours approached me and said you should check out what these guys are doing. Send me your link to her kids, and I was like, oh snap, that's like awesome. And so it was like with the way that you worked, you make us enjoy every journey. So basically, you know, we go online and they have all these songwriters and you give them uh, uh, an idea, a subject, and mine was suicide prevention. And you have all these writers and you can even use your fans. And then you can say, what, what's your subject? Let's come out with a subject. And then you guys submit lines, said submit lines of lyrics. And my subject was, I said to, I said to anyone who was interested in helping me write this song uh, through Hookers, I said, I want you to imagine that you are on the Golden Gate Bridge and you're walking beautiful moonlit night and everything. And then at the edge of the bridge, you see a, a, a person and that person's about to jump. What would you say to stop him? That was the song. It was unbelievable. I mean, I remember when you said that was going to be your theme. I was like, oh my God, I I don't know how this is going to go. But that our rule at Hookist is that we have no rules. That's our only, yeah, I guess that's yeah. our only rule. And we're like, okay, if that's what you want to do, let's see how it goes. And I mean, it's about the most moving song out there. I mean, it's it just- It suited incredible. all my expectations, Meredith. I mean, we had like, you know, Meredith was trying to get me to bring my own fans to write and stuff. And there wasn't as many, but there was a lot of regulars that yeah. that, they, that come on hookers just to help with, with writing songs. And these are pros, like, I'm like, what? Like the lines that they were coming out with, I was like, <laughs> and it was so yeah. hard to choose which one. And I was like, can I take all of them? No, you've got to choose one line. I'm like, okay. And what was amazing about it was that when we sung it on stage, when Terry, you and Terry, flew in to my concert in Utah, flew in from New York, just to sing this song with me. Well, we were never gonna miss it. I mean, that we, was an incredible opportunity. I mean, we'd never rehearsed it, right? Like, we, we no, had one rehearsal in the green room uh, 25 minutes before, and we're like, oh, what about this? I was like, don't worry about it. Let's just go on and let's just figure it out, right? <laughs> and we and you brought the house down. It was like a seven minute song and you brought the house down. I mean, there were people singing, you had the calling and repeating. I mean, it was uh, unbelievable. We'll send it, that video around. It yeah. was hands down. I mean, I've been doing this for 30 odd years, entertaining. <laughs> hands down, top five experience. Uh, You're on, kidding. Oh my gosh. Top, top five experience. Oh my God. Oh, Alex, that's so beautiful. I love it. Thank you. That means so much. Oh and you know, it was so moving. I mean, the people were moved, the people were crying, people were cheering. It was yeah. amazing. And they were shining their lights. I mean, it was really <laughs> something. And now you're gonna do one in, you have 150 suicide prevention shows coming up, right? Yeah. Which so is unbelievable. Next, yeah, for, for next year. And we, we're just, we're gonna take this uh, all, all across the world, but mainly in America, but they, we're getting requests all over the world that, what I love about it is that you, we, we want to, I want to try and find a way to partner with you guys so that every show we could have a new song or every show we promote that song. You know what I mean? So like somehow that we just keep pushing that because uh, with, with me, suicide prevention is about collaboration. Like we collaborate in songs and everything. What I mean by that is you know, you talked a little bit about it when we had, I had an original song, I was about to perform on stage, it's called Survivor. And I said, hey, if there's anyone on, in the audience who's had any suicidal ideations or anything like that, whatever, come up on stage. I only thought about five people would come, 192 people came. Here's where the collaboration was. The collaboration was when everybody turned to each other and they said, wait, you've been through that too? And the other one's like, what, you too? And that's when they embraced because these two understood. By the way, this one was 12 years old. This one was a 14 year old girl, by the way, right? They go on stage, they look at each other and they embrace. They don't know each other, 
But what connected them was that they both had that same experience. That, and then the music is what brought them together. And that kind of collaboration, it's the best collaboration on the planet, man. Yeah. It's collaboration huge. saved lives. Totally. And in that song, I mean, we really did bring, you did, brought the entire world together. There were people from India, there were people from oh. Brazil, there were people from Sweden, and there were people that came to the show, you know, who yeah. were in Utah and came yeah. to the show to perform. I mean, and and uh, Melissa, if you're out there, I'm saying hello to you. I love giving shout outs to those people. She was blown away because you were so kind to bring uh, me up on stage, not just Terry to perform with you, but me to talk a little bit about it. And we gave her a shout out and it was, she was blown away. So I got to give her another one, but I oh. see so many comments. Thank you all for these sweet, uh, for being here. <laughs> <coughs> well, that's awesome, awesome. So I have one last question. My question is, uh, I've been bald for like five years. I dyed my hair blonde and it fell out. I used to have dreadlocks. Yes, I have dreadlocks. How can I grow my hair back? Just kidding. <laughs> no. Well, there's this stuff called no, vegan more. <laughs> no, my, my question is more of a, um, uh, it's more of an emotional thing for me. What, what, is, what is a song that, that, that brings out an emotion for you? Like a song that you hear and then that's actually made you cry. Like you didn't know it was, or this song that just brought tears to your eyes, just listening to it. The first time ever I saw your face, that song for me, Ooh. I'll be a puddle in 10 seconds. That's what? just the most beautiful song. Yeah, yeah. How about you, what song? And I just saw your face, here I are. Yeah, I haven't heard that in years. Oh my God, I I'm love that song. <laughs> How about you? What song tears you apart in a good way? Me? Um, this might sound weird, but it's, it's actually a... Um, <laughs> there's James Brown did a song and the version that he did, he never ever recorded. But he performed it live, I think it was in Berlin, something like that. You can see it online. But it was sunny. Did a oh. sunny yesterday, my life is filled with rain. So it starts really slow. And then he goes, Sunny was so true. I love it. And he just speeds <laughs> it up. And I peed myself. I peed That's every part of my pants. Because it was like, I never ever knew that it could do that. You know what I mean? Like the song was a ballad, you know, normally you see that. But then when he spit it up, it was just such this, just a rush of just emotions that just hit me so hard. Then the horns started coming. I'm like, horns? You know what I mean? And the electric guitar, you know what I mean? And then you've got freaking, you know, Bootsy Collins freaking slapping the bass. And I'm just like, okay, you guys are just like, I'm done, I'm done. So, it, yeah, that, that, that was it for me. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's a great one. That's an amazing yeah. song. And then, so I, just because I, you know, I don't, I, I'm the goofy fan, right, in this whole thing with Hookus. Terry, you know, is the musician oh, and his, oh. uh, even the way it came about was he, um, you know, writes with Crash Test Dummies. I mean, he re records Crash Test Dummies. Brad Roberts from the Crash Test Dummies is amazing. And I got to, you know, know him over time. And, you know, it's amazing when you have, know a rock star, you could suddenly ask all the goofy questions that, you know, the little fangirl in me wants to ask. Driving so by I, Tom Rush, sorry. Someone said what? driving by Tom Rush. That's a dope one right there, sorry. Oh. Carry on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't even see those. Oh, yeah, there's so many. Yeah, right. that's good. Um, so yeah, so um, yeah, that's how it came about. So Brad was talking about, I was able to ask Brad all these questions and I realized, you know, their social media was coming around and like people were, you know, Prince like took a photo of his salad and put it online. And then some, about the hugest artist out there, I think, and I'm not gonna say his name to embarrass him, but he did a, uh, in order to promote his record, he, they made, created an animated version of Ring Around the Rosie. 
And if you played Ring Around the Rose, Ring Around the Rosie in the cartoon with this artist, you would get a free download. And we thought, oh my God, there has got to be a more uh, a better way for artists to engage with their fans and a more authentic way because like that seems a little ridiculous to me. Yeah. So, um, oh, you're giving us the behind the scenes feeling, right? The backstage, I hear the music. Oh. So, yeah, so what ends up happening is um, we talked to Brad about it and he uh, was like, I, I think, you know, he was telling us a lot of stuff about how, you know, streaming, you're not making money, blah, blah, blah. And he was an yeah. artist in the 90s. So he really made money hand over fist, which is lovely, but it when it disappears, you're kind of shocked. And uh, so we realized, okay, artists need a new income stream and they definitely need a better way to engage with their fans. So what is more authentic than writing an original song with them? And Brad was game and willing to uh, try it out. And we... Yeah, he was our guinea pig, and but we did it in public. Our first one, we had no idea, like, can you even write a good song? Um, can you even write a song? Like, will this work? But we spent all this money and built this thing. And literally, when we pushed it live, we didn't know, like, it, it shows up, when you push things live onto the internet, it shows up in different places at different times. Yeah. So in New York, it was not live for like 20 minutes, but it was live in other places around the world. So when we finally saw it, people had already submitted lyrics. They had built profile pages. They were commenting and cheering each other on. And on day two, people were paying to participate. So we knew that, uh, you know, we had something. And then we've been going from there and, and our issue, our, our mission has always been, you know, both Terry and I are artists and you know, obviously we all need to make money and business is a great thing, but if you can, if you're gonna build a high profile platform, let's also try to make a difference. So we've always encouraged artists to uh, support a good cause. We don't tell them what to support, but, um, and those collaborations have been the most powerful because it really does, it, it, we have a community in the end, like people feel invested in the song and people care about the song, even if their lyrics don't make it in, because let's face it, when, you know, several thousand people are participating, only a few people's lyrics are going to make it into the song, but yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. it's, uh, it's powerful. And it's, it, those are amazing. And we love to support good causes. And we see obviously in your case and all the other charities we've supported that it really does make a difference and people, um, feel connected. Yeah, and you know what I love about uh, this hookist model is that <clears throat> even if you're not a professional songwriter, you can submit lines. Like, where can you go? Like, if I walked on the street, I said, hey, I want to write a song. I'm looking for a professional songwriter. Someone said, well, I, I, I'm not really a professional, but I, I'm like, okay, fine. You're not next. You know what I mean? You, when, where would you want to work with a, a, a songwriter that doesn't know how to write songs. But it's <laughs> crazy because it works with, with this because you have just, you just look and you just see all these lines. And some of them from, yes. from professionals, some of them are from just like grandma and like some dude, yes. like, you know, that works at 7 Eleven. You know what I mean? Like, seriously, yeah. those are guys like, I work at 7 Eleven and I just thought I'd check this out. And I put a line and I was like, dude, that line is dope. He's like, really? But yeah, I'm gonna put and it's true. I mean, some people, you know, there are people that are songwriters and they use it actually right now. We're writing a song with Jane Sachs and Chris Robbins. I see them on here. Thanks for being here, guys. They're amazing. And uh, Jane writes the lyrics. Chris uh, writes the music. And um, but Jane uses it at, as her songwriting gym to keep, you know, her songwriting chops sharp and yes. in and then other people you know we're just writing one line or a couple at a time so it's easy access for everyone you know like the thought of writing a song can be pretty daunting especially if you're not a songwriter um, and even songwriters get writer's block but for in our case it's just one line or a couplet at a time so you don't feel that pressure and you can really craft something and actually when we wrote a song with spin doctors chris barron oh. um me too oh my god it was such a thrill i stalked him for a long time to get him actually really? um 
And, but he said, he was like, you know, the, the what he really loved about the experience was that, or, or what he thought, you know, was helpful to people was that when you write one line, when you try to write one line or a couplet, one really good line or couplet, you have one really good line and then you write another really good line and you keep going writing a bunch of them, you're gonna have a really good song. But if you just try to write a really good song, it's like this, it's too hard and it's too big and you're not focused enough. And yeah. so that was one thing that he really impressed upon people and, and he still sends people to us, um, you know, because it's also fun, you know, people are voting for each other, they're cheering each other on, it's very social. So um, it's, it's, we didn't even realize that, like when we built it, we didn't think of it in that way. We were just trying to think of like, okay, what if it was someone like me who does not know how to write a song? How could we make it easy for me to do it? And like, because for me, no way I could write a song, but I could write one line you know, and I've gotten a few lines in there here and there. I have a suit open, so no one knows it's me. But um, <laughs> uh, but it's, you know, it is a neat thing. And when you get chosen, I mean, it's like the biggest thrill ever. And then, you know, when you sing someone's line, like when you sang Melissa's line, I know Melissa totally freaked out. And every single person uh, who's lyric, you know, it's amazing to hear, you know, some artists that you love sing a line that you wrote. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Marilyn, oh, I, I just lost it. Marilyn said something really cool. Now I've lost it. Oh, oh, I saw Marilyn's name go by too. Marilyn, hi. Can you so read what she said? I can't find. I, I just read it. Just real quick. Perry, uh, Marilyn, what did you say that again? The one, the line before, because it disappeared, and I don't know how to get it back up. I'm scrolling about through. Artists though. being diverse. Oh, about oh yes, oh I, maybe. Artists. Yeah, we do. We. I'm gonna, oh, here we are, our, our diverse, everyone offers their own style. We learn so much by working together. Yes, yeah. I feel like, like we don't have a genre, like right now, J uh, Jane and Chris are doing a country song. I, I don't know, what What would you call your song? What kind of, genre, what genre would that be? Oh, you mean ours? Yeah. Or, I don't know, it's kind of, it started off like almost like a folk kind of song, but. Inspiration yeah. for sure. I, Folk inspirational, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it was rocking. It was fantastic. But yeah, yeah, we've done actually, and that's funny with Chris Barron too. He, so so each time, so I mean, we never really explained how this works. Like the artist comes up with a theme for the song. People submit one to two line lyrics based on that theme. People get to vote, comment, and cheer each other on. Then a couple of days later, the artist comes back and reviews the lyrics that have been submitted and uh, chooses a winner. And then they shoot a little video where they announce, you know, like, okay, you know, like uh, Tom Truitt, I loved your lyric. And, you know, Paul Zavik, I loved your lyric, but, you know, uh, Alex Boyer, I'm going to use your first line in the song. So I get to be the rock star now. Um, and then they, they, you know, they give all these shout outs, announce the winner, but then, you know, Alex, Alex being the amazing Alex would sing it acapella right there for us. Chris Barron, you know, you kind of, I think you stuck with pretty much the same melody throughout it. Chris Barron, every single time he had a different melody for the song. So yeah. sometimes we had like an R&B song. Sometimes we had like a bluegrass kind yeah. of song. He had like an anthemic song. I mean, it was amazing. And then what he finally, you know, uh, performed for us, we did a, a show in virtual reality with him and he performed it for us. Um, and, and, it was a completely different song altogether than everything everything else he did. So it really showed his genius, you know, and like the whole thing, I feel like in the beginning when we first uh, went around asking people what they thought of this idea, a big agent said, well, I don't know if pulling the curtain away and letting people see the messy process is, is a good idea. And I was like, you know, like I'm the person that's fascinated by the messy process of creation. Yep. Like, I think that's where the beauty is and the magic for sure. Cause I don't know how to do it. Um, and that's what it ended up being. Like people want to be a part of that and they want to see it. And it, and it just shows how amazing you are. Like when you performed the song, you know, it was the song in progress at the time. It wasn't complete on uh, Jenny Hardman's Fox show. Yeah. I mean, you were blown away by it. Uh, and then when you and Terry performed it in Salt Lake City, it was 
a, another thing completely. And now you're going to record it, right? Yeah, I can't. I can't wait. Looks like I'm going to be recording it here in Vegas because I've I've moved from Utah to Vegas, and uh, I've actually had some meetings here in regards to a residency here. But I can't I can't talk about it much. But I'm I just barely had the meeting, so I'm backstage of this place where we had the meeting about a potential residency. So this is like this is all real. There's music in the background. I'm just backstage. So this is where I'm doing it from. So this is kind Excellent. of raw and authentic here because I got people, the workers going in. That's the that's the door for the workers that are coming in and out. Because <laughs> the restaurants back there, the stage is through there also. So, but um, it's perfect. That's our know? goal, August, right? Yeah. That's our goal always to give people a behind the scenes experience, yeah. and you're doing it for us right now. So but thank I love, you. I love, I love that you know, messy. Like you talk about the messy. So that's really what behind the scenes is, you know what I mean? And if you notice, it's like, in fact, when you look at that stuff, it makes the song even better. When you when you when you can open up the curtains and you can see how it can you can see the struggles even and the writer's block and the inspiration and getting back on the on the on the horse again and now yeah the chorus now we got it all you know that everything about that that's why I love watching like I, I'll spend most of the time on Netflix watching uh you know all the music shows from all the artists about behind the music uh, you know that stuff really inspires me because it shows me that oh so I can be like that I can like leave the song for five years and not even come back to it because I don't know what the crap I'm doing and come back and finish it off like there's no wrong way there's no right way you know everybody has their process but also I love learning other people's ways you know, of, of, of songwriting, you know? You know, I have, a, I have a friend that she would listen, this is crazy. She would only write when she would hear her favorite song. And what I mean, mean by that is that she would hear her favorite song, then she'd get all her, you know, creative juices going and she gets excited. And in that excited mode, she will take that song and write a new song from the feeling that she got of her favorite songs. That makes sense? Yeah. So, so then, so she's not plagiarizing, she's just capturing the feeling that she got. And so now when she takes that and does a new original song, you feel that whole feeling. Yeah, she got and inspired so, and then inspiring genius, her audience. so powerful. And I, I, I've always wanted to try it and I tried it once where it was just, it was just a song that I heard on the radio and I had to pull over it was so dope. And so I just got that in. And then in that feeling that I got, I started writing. And yeah. so, I, so I stole that feeling, <laughs> if that makes That's sense. Awesome. And I, I love it. a whole different song. And right now that is my most successful song today. It's called Lemonade. <laughs> oh, I love that song. I didn't know I, that. See, I, I actually thing? charted as an independent artist. It charted on uh, Billboard and everything. And it's funny, people say to me, whenever I hear this song, I have this overwhelming feeling of excitement. And I'm like, because that's, that's so the word that I got when I wrote that song from the song, from my favorite song. It was excitement. Yeah. So it passed through. Right, it's so that's awesome. Yeah. I love so it. I love well, it. you know what? You know what I also found inspiring? Um, we should have to talk about your experience on America's Got Talent. Because that, uh, your, everyone needs to look up, Alex, for uh, your video when you first got chosen for the show is about, and it speaks to what we were just talking about earlier about like never giving in and, you know, succumbing to fear and keep pushing and going for your dreams and all of that. It's, it's so incredible, but tell us about that experience because it had to be in amazing, amazing, right? Because oh. they loved Alex, he got a standing ovation. It was, you had an incredible run. Thank you so much. Yeah, I remember just going on there we had this, you know, the big standing ovation and, you know, Howie Mandel said, in all my six years on this show, this is the best act I've seen. And, you know, even, even I was even getting love from Howard Stern. Howard Stern was like, I, I could watch you sing, you know, I could over and over. And I'm just like, whoa, this is like one of the most critical, you know, musically, you know, people. And so, you know, but but when they 
when they when I got the four yeses, I was in tears. And actually, well, and there was two reasons. One, at the end of the song, I jumped off the stage into the splits onto the floor. <laughs> hurt like you wouldn't believe. So that was one of the reasons why there was tears. But when I got up and got back and I got that, you know, the you know, they gave me the critique and everything and and, and put me through. The reason why I was in tears, and it's a story that I couldn't tell anyone, that's why I love BTS, right? Because this is my BTS, I'm telling you now. I had auditioned for that show for seven years. Oh, you're kidding. I'd been auditioned for seven years and I'd, I'd go to different cities. One time I went and I spent the money I didn't have on my college school, kids' school funds that I didn't have on the flights, on the hotels, on everything. And I would go and I remember the first one, I was there. 14 hours in line, you know? And then once you get, once you get in, you, you have to audition for five more people. Oh and if you gosh. pass those five auditions, then you get on TV. So the first time I went, I got in line and everything, 14 hours, I got to my first, got to my second, and then that was it. They're like, nah, don't like you. So I went home, I came back again, got the third time, I got to three different spots. It's like you go in this big hall, and they have three different spots. Actually, there's five. You have to go this, and it's like a mock. There's three judges or four judges, and they all got their piece of paper. So you go through there, after waiting four hours, 14 hours, you go through there. Then if they like you, you go to the next one. And it's like a partition fence and a, and a merch table and four guys on there with, a, with, with notes. That's it, right? Then they take you to another fake tent, and so, the, 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 four, the, the fifth time I did it, I made it to the very last one. So you get to that tent, then the next one, if they like you, you go on TV. So I'd been there two days. I oh spent my, my last money, I'm broke as a joke. Now I'm like, the hotel that I was at, I, I slept in the parking lot because I, I, no, I had no money for the next day because they told me to come back the next day. So I get to that one, and the next one, if they love you, you get on TV. Two. Three people liked me and the fourth one didn't. Oh, and you have to get them all? You have to get them all on that very last one. Oh, no. And then the sixth one, I went back to, for some, don't ask me why I kept going back. There's a voice <laughs> inside my heart that just kept going, saying, you got to go back. So I just had to follow it. I don't know why. It didn't make sense. I was losing money. I was losing my self-esteem, everything. And this voice kept saying, you gotta go back. So I went back, this is the sixth one. And I got in, I made it through all the partitions, got on TV. So as I get up on stage now, I start singing. Within, I hadn't performed for 30 seconds. And I go, ah! Oh my God. Ah. Three. Like I got trauma every time I heard that noise. If I hear a doorbell, I, go, I, I got trauma after that day. It was the most humiliating experience because I thought I was killing it. And the more I thought I was killing it, the more, <laughs> right? Yeah, no, and it's then a hard the, fight. Then there, there was one guy, okay, who, who didn't do the, the buzzer, right? Now I have to stand and be judged, right? And I'm not going to say who the people were, but one of them said, you know what, your performance, first they said, you should, you should consider being a comedian. Have you ever thought of being a comedian? I'm like, and I'm like, but no, 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 no. <laughs> well, you should, because your performance was a joke. <gasps> oh, I hate when they're mean. It's unnecessary. So I, Meredith, I got on the plane, I cried all the way home. I was in tears. First of all, I didn't know how to explain to my wife that again, I failed, right? And you and have how many kids? I, at that time, at that particular time, I had four and a half kids. I've got eight now, right? So, <laughs> so I, 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 same mother, by the way, anyway, no twins. Anyway, so I got- Same mother, no twins. <laughs> so I, so I, I, so the next time, actually that point, I was like, I'm done. Not only did I ever, ever want to go back on the show, I decided I was never ever going to sing again. Uh, it was so, it was so hard, so hurtful. And then I'm, I'm screaming at my voice that kept telling me to come back. 
Because I was saying to myself, my inner voice, why would you do that to me? Because you know, you have this feeling, you know, you've got to follow it through. This is your heart. It's like, yes, you have to that's because it's okay. It's too. God uh -huh. speaking, saying, you've got to do this. And like, but then it doesn't work out. And so now you're like, really? So I had that too. I had those issues. But I remember just like, I had a friend of mine that was like, you should try going back on again. I'm like, I don't think so. And I remember just like my wife, she had said to me, Alex, you should consider going back on again. And I'm like, Honey, are you, are you kidding me? Do you know how much money we wasted? We lost all that stuff. She said, no, you should try it. I'm serious. I don't know why I'm saying this, but you know, I'm just feeling that you should just make a goal of it. You know what I mean? Why don't we get you out of the house? And all you do is just moan and complain every day. So, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, um, no, I'm not going to do that. And then she said something that changed everything. She said, so what kind of message are you going to send out to your kids? Uh. Our women, they just know how to get us, right? They know how to <laughs> say that thing that just makes us play like, what? I get back on the plane, I get on that rehearsal. Luckily, and it was actually, it was crazy because a day before that, I get a phone call from uh, one of the talent scouts. Hey, we're a talent scout from America Got Talent. We saw your Shake It Off music video where you did an African version of a Taylor Swift song. We wondered if you'd be interested in performing that on the show. So do you know what that meant? That meant I didn't have to wait for 14 hours in the line. I didn't have to go through those five auditions. I went straight on the show. Wow. How great is that? And it's I'm meant like, to be. Oh my gosh. So I went straight on the show. And then, so when you saw me on that stage and you saw me in tears, that was the tears that was reminiscing on the BTS. Mm. On right. every single minute I was on stage, every single blood, sweat and tears, every plane ride that I had no money for, every, every, every uh, expense that I put on a card that I didn't have money for, everything. I mean, it was like, I, I, I realized that I, it taught me something about myself, about Alex. It taught me that there's no plan B. Ah, uh, yeah, that's For a good me, way to look at it. Harrison there's Ford, only right? plan A, and I can't stop. I cannot give up. Or maybe I should just, I'm good at graphic design. Maybe I should just go back and fall back on that. Be a graphic designer. I can make a lot of money, especially now. You know what I mean? I did graphic designs for all my albums and everything. So that all came in fact. No. There's no plan B for me. It's, it's good. This or I die. You know, it's, it's funny. Or I die. There's no in between because the in between, I get no joy, happiness, or fulfillment from plan B. Yes, I totally agree with you. It's funny because that's how, in the beginning of Hookist, a lot of people didn't even understand it. I mean, I certainly know that experience of uh, acting, you know, where you're just like uh, nothing worse than auditioning. My God, when the people are eating their lunch as you're crying, you know, you know, spouting Shakespeare, crying Iago, and they're like, you know, opening their potato chips. That's the worst. It's demeaning. And you really do. It does get to you over after a while. Yeah. But and the same thing with Hook is, I mean, the beginning, people really didn't understand it. Like we had a... Um, they didn't even understand what fan engagement was. Right. So we had a period of time where it was like, trying, like I remember one head of a record label said to me, so is it like, like if Bruce Springsteen has writer's block in the middle of the night, like he can go online and ask his fans to help him write a song? And I was like, no, no, that's not what it is. Hey, and it was, one day you know, it's it, gonna happen. All the superstars yeah. are gonna be on hookers they be writing songs that way. Yes, but not like that, you know, but but that, you know, like that it'll be planned and it'll be for a good cause and it'll be, you know, yeah. an experience, not like that you need, you know, you can just jump on any time. Uh, <laughs> that, you know, like sometimes the time is not right and the time was not right. People didn't understand it yet. They didn't understand oh. the concept. And now we're getting like after COVID with, um, you know, events like these, you know, where you're online, people are understanding, like you actually can connect in a meaningful way. And, you know, okay, you can ask people to spend $150 
to, you know, take a meet and greet photo and all of that. But is it very meaningful for the fan? Like they have a great photo, but, you know, writing a song with the artist is like within their wheelhouse. It's totally authentic. And it, and the thing that people say is that comes up over and over again. Well, two things, actually. One is they call it intimate over and over. People say it's an intimate experience yeah, with their right. favorite artist. And then, interestingly, I can't tell you how many times and I don't know if it's because we've promoted this term, this saying, but one person initially with the crash test dummies, he, he said to me, he was like, this was the bucket list experience that never occurred to me until it happened. And Ooh. since then, so many people have said bucket list over yeah. and over because it's not, you know, it's, it's much more meaningful than, you know, the picture that cost $150. This, you know, people do, we do have people that spend over a hundred dollars over the course of a song. Sometimes the average paying user spends like 10 or 20, depending on how engaged the artist is. Yeah. Um, but when you have that at scale, you know, we have people from around the world, the engagement is really deep and people feel really connected. So it converts people from casual fans to super fans or to patrons yeah. you know, on Patreon where they're willing to spend a few dollars every month to support your art yeah. and it, and it builds a community. So it's, uh, so I totally get that where you're just like, it just wasn't the right time and I'm going to keep pushing. And that's what Terry and I have been doing. Sometimes we feel like Sisyphus really, but you know, we're getting to this place where like, even today we got an amazing phone call. I was getting ready for this and we've been working, you know, we, so we just expanded the platform. So we used to only be able to do one collaboration at a time, but we yeah. can now do multiple. So we can have many different artists at the same time. So we oh. have Jane, and Chris, we have actually impossible Kings is back, which, you know, Ooh. we have an amazing, with them about kindness um and that's terry's band we have gary lucas coming up and we have um someone else no i can't remember who um but anyway we can do these multiple collaborations at the same time so artists can grow their fan bases fans can discover new music and um it makes it what was our original uh vision really was an yeah. online songwriting festival you know where it's like this global experience yeah. and um and now people are getting it because people are, you know, because of COVID really that, yeah. you know, people suddenly realize, oh, we can be together, yeah. even though it's, well, you know, you can feel together. So that, that's a new great thing that we just love about what's happened here. And, uh, and you, yeah. you know, doing that amazing thing with us was so, was so special and we're dying to release it. So Terry's written some music. Yes. Oh, by the way, yes, I didn't have a chance to connect back with you. I've heard... <laughs> I've heard the track. I've been listening to it over and over, but I haven't had a chance to tell you, <laughs> but it's dope. It's so awesome. And I'm so excited to go in and, 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 jumping up and down right there. It's going to be ridiculous. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Okay. And it's just such a good song. Okay. Yeah. Are you it's kicked over there? No, no, it's just my manager telling me he's, he's got to go oh, home. Is it Eddie? Hi, Eddie. Right. Yeah, Eddie. <laughs> yeah, he's had <laughs> to here. So, um, yeah, honestly, yeah. Um, so I'm excited to get, so it looks like I'm going to find a studio here in uh, in Vegas. We're going to look for a studio here. Actually, we've got a whole bunch of opportunities and we're going to get in and we're going to record it here, so. That's great. It, That's great. It, it is, so, you know. Yes, it was Paul Zamek, Eddie Winrick. How do you? Yes, yeah. Eddie Winrick, exactly. Everyone knows him. <laughs> Everybody, somebody knows Eddie, I swear, it's crazy. Yes. Well, That's Paul fair. is on our advisory board and he is the one, actually it was so funny when we met Paul. We, so we were in Project Music. We got to give a shout out to Project Music because we wouldn't know Kevin Tom. Kevin. Hi, Project Kevin. Music. Oh, this is crazy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Kevin, I saw you on LinkedIn. Oh my gosh. Um, a whole bunch of cool people we know. Yeah. Yes. And Kevin actually wrote really beautiful things about you on LinkedIn. Um, oh, he's a good man. He's a good man. But Great. thank you to Project Music for introducing us to Tom. That was Beth, actually, Rebecca Hall, who introduced us to Tom. Yeah. And uh, and Paul Zamek is, yes, I turned around one day when they were announcing that we were a Project Music company. We were chosen to be a part of this amazing program that they have, the National Entrepreneur Center. And, you know, like we, everyone was talking, congratulating each other. And I turn around and I, because I hear this hysterical laughter. And it's these ah. two guys <laughs> who falling. It's Terry and Paul. Like, and I, they're laughing, 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 laughing. I was talking to other people. 
And eventually I'm like, who is that guy? Does Terry know him? I think they must know each other from like way back. Nope, they just met right then and there and they loved each other. And so right. Paul has been an, an unbelievable support to us and uh, just the sweetest guy. As Stephen Lynn, I think you're out there too. We love you, you know it. Um, but yeah, so many great people we met in Nashville and we uh, totally, totally love this city. I mean, it's just an amazing place of artists. You know, it's not just country music, it's artists. Yeah, 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 it's beautiful. And then Vegas, we're gonna come to Vegas. We're gonna oh, come yeah. see you. Yeah, I got some big hopes and dreams here and uh, really excited yeah. about it. But yes. we want to do a suicide prevention concert here also. Um, yeah, that I, will be I want to do it. Here's, here's crazy. Remember I told you, man, it's like once you've been through so much failure and, and, and it's natural, you ain't scared anymore. I'm telling you, I want to do the Allegiant Stadium right here. I want to fill it up. What is oh, it, 60,000 yeah. people? I want to do the biggest suicide prevention concert ever, uh, at least here in Vegas. And so, you know, just making waves hanging out with people, but yeah, we, we ain't playing. We want to do some good and uh, yeah. it feels good to do good, you know what I'm saying? Well, you're making a difference for sure. And so people can donate if they want to, right? To uh, the Steve yeah. Young Foundation? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's called the Ben Not Break Foundation org, And the foundation really is basically, I use that to sponsor these suicide prevention concerts. So, and then what we do with the concerts is whatever city we go to, it, we have, we call out all the mental health therapists and we'll have five of the best come on stage and speak. My band is playing lightly underneath. And then we have, uh, um, we go back and forth between my band playing songs and then these therapists, but we call them thought leaders. This therapist is not cool anymore, right? I want to make right. my therapist cool. But right now they call, we call them thought leaders, right? But they're Perfect. really mental health, licensed mental health therapists. And they get up and they talk to the kids. And then I sing, my band performs. Then they get up and talk to the kids. And then my band's playing very lightly. It's like a cross, it's a mix between Coachella meets TED Talks. And it's yeah. so powerful. And we want to do that at the, uh, at the Central, uh, Central Park. We, we've, 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 we've got a connection there. And we want to do that there this fall. Uh, September, we've got the goal is to just do a whole tour, uh, suicide prevention mega concerts. And we don't even need we don't even need celebrities. It's funny because people are like, "Hey, yeah, you need a celebrity to bring people in." We did one in Idaho at the Ford Arena. They were only expecting two thousand people. We had ten thousand people turn up, Meredith, and it was because everybody wants to be a part of something like this, but they don't know what to do. Yeah, so they want to I'm shot. And I've noticed every time we've done it, if we were expecting 2,000 people, it's triple that, that turn up. So, wow. you know, we, our goal is to do this everywhere, as many places as possible. But the kids, they need this. They want something. They're tired of losing their, their friends at school. They're tired of losing themselves. And mom and dad is tired of just hearing of another story. And so it, it's just been a powerful experience. But the, the, the reason why this has helped me is because when I was 16, I wanted to take my life. And um, I was, uh, my mom moved, she went, well, my mom's Nigerian. I, I was, grew up in England. She was going to Nigeria for three weeks on vacation. She said, Alex, I'm going away for three weeks. I'm going to put you with my uncle. So I, I stayed with my uncle for three weeks. My plan, he, her plan was she's going to come back after three weeks. Well, she never came back. And he was abusive, emotionally, uh, physically, and sexually. And he used to pass me around at parties with his friends. Um, and uh, so, anyway, it was it was it was a dark time for me. Uh, I wanted to take my life. So my goal was I used to go to these like parties, these dances. My goal, I wanted to, so I love dancing. So I went to this nightclub. It was one of the most famous nightclubs in England. It was called uh, Hippodrome. It's not there anymore. But I got in, I'm 16 years old. I go into this nightclub. My goal was going to dance, and then I was going to take my life. So I'm on the dance floor, and I'm about to leave. The DJ taps the microphone. He's like, yo, 
Is that Alex Foyer on stage? I mean, on the on the dance floor? And I'm like, like, who the heck knows? I'm 16 years old. I'm a 21 year old in up club. I got in illegally. How, who the heck knows me here? This is crazy. It's like, yo, I want to tell you all about this cat. His name's Alex Boyer. He's, he's, he's going to be a superstar one day. And I'm like, what? So I guess I did a talent show three weeks before, and he was the DJ at the talent oh show. My. And he's like, Alex, you're going to do, you're going to make it, man. He had no idea what's going on. He said, you're going to be big one day. Keep going. Don't stop. I want to dedicate this song to you. So this song comes up, right? This song spoke to my spirit. It was like 10 years worth of therapy in three minutes and 58 seconds. And it changed my life. It changed my life. It was like, I walked in to that nightclub suicidal and I left with a mustard seed of hope. But that's all I needed because I did not want to take my life. Nothing changed after I left the club. It was still dark, it was still a nightmare, but I didn't want to die. That was the biggest thing. That's why, that's why I do this, man. That's the day I chose to be an entertainer. At 16, in that nightclub. Well, Alex, and those That's shows... why this is my plan A, because yeah, nothing yeah. else has brought me more joy. You know what I'm saying? You know, I have a lot of friends that have stopped doing music because it wasn't paying the bills and it was too hard. I have friends that are millionaires now because they decided to stop music and do a job that they're doing and they're supporting their family and they're going on trips, vacations, doing everything they want, financially free, but depressed as all get out. Because one of them said, Alex, I wish I was you. So what do you mean? I said, I wish I could stick with it, man. So I, I just couldn't because I need, I couldn't support my family, this and that and that. But I'm not happy. He said, I'm not happy. I never, ever want that for myself. I don't care how much money your brother's making. If I ain't happy, if I ain't happy. You got to be. You got to. Yeah, I, I agree. I just find fulfillment, you know, finding fulfillment. You know, most of my friends, like, I, 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 I don't know. There's a couple of artists that I emulate, that I try to emulate, like from actors, singers. And here's the crazy thing. The ones that I've admired the most, they've taken their lives through suicide. So what am I emulating, Meredith? If it's, you know what I'm saying? So I realized that I have to find something bigger than music, bigger than an artist bigger than my role models to emulate. I have to find something that's bigger than me. And that's what's become with this these suicide prevention concepts. Trying to build a community. You are. You people, are definitely. You know what I mean? And that's what you guys are doing with Hookers. Because every song is dedicated to a foundation, a, a cause. I like it that you're not just, hey, let's just do a happy song. Hey. There's like a purpose behind it, behind yeah. every song. And I just think that is just one of the, that's why I see the joy on your face. Because I see that you're, you're, you're finding fulfillment. Like Terry is a beast, man, you know? Like what he's doing as well, like he's, I can see it every time I get on the phone call with you guys. I just see just this joy and just this fulfillment and the smiles on your faces. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah, you could give up and try something else. But, but you, you're, you're doing it because you've caught on. There's something that is, your hook is, you're hooked. <laughs> you're yeah, we're well, totally hooked. You're so right. You, you can't unhinge now. You can't unhinge. You're, you're, and I see it, I feel it. You just go on your website and you feel all of that, you know? Ah, I'm so but glad. I'm so, so glad, glad to know you. I'm so glad to know you, Meredith, you and, and Terry. I'm, I'm so glad to see that you're showing people that there's, that, that the music is powerful, but it's bigger than music. There's something bigger than music that we can take, that we can take our music to. I we can totally use it to bless lives, change lives, save lives. We can use yep. it to raise money. We can use it to raise awareness and raise our own personal higher consciousness. Yes, oh my gosh, so true. 
none better than this. This, oh. you know. No, I totally agree with you. I love you. One. I love what you guys are doing. Well, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for doing this with me today. I feel honored awesome. to have you. And Tom, <laughs> it's certainly an honor to be on your show. So thank you very much. Tom, you're the man, man. You're the true it. True it. <laughs> you're thank the you true so it. For letting us on and, and for this became therapeutic to me. And I didn't realize that, that that's again that connection, just that I'm just talking and airing out, and you're talking, airing out. This 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 is like. It's, this became therapy for me that I didn't have to pay for. Good. <laughs> me well, too. I enjoyed it. I mean, well, I got to say, yeah, <laughs> this is an amazing forum. And I think it's interesting, you know, like it's a, it's, this is a bit of a TED talk in a way too, uh, between two people really. And then your concert certainly is a TED talk and a concert, a rockin' concert for sure. Thank you. Thank you. That's well, what I'm looking here in, in Vegas with this show. You know, the, this show is not just about entertainment. I'm calling it inter entertainment. You know, where oh, I want people to come in feeling sad and come out with a mustard seed, you know what I mean? Oh, that's great. Oh. oh my gosh, Jay Underwood, I see you there. Thank you for tuning in. So that's one thing that we want to do. And actually, Alex, I wanted to tell you this. So yeah. the there was a man at your concert who was, I think he was a superintendent, right? And he spoke and he had a lot of, um, there was a lot of suicide in his school. Yeah, Daryl Robinson. Good oh my friend. God, yes, yes, Dr. Robinson, right. And so I've been in contact with him because, and Jay Underwood, you know, we wanted to bring Hookist into schools because oh. it's so powerful. You know, like to allow yeah. people, first of all, you get, you know, music is obviously not very important in schools these days outside of Nashville, maybe. I don't even know if it is there, but um, to allow kids to use words to express, express emotions. I mean, it's so powerful in so many Ooh. different ways. I mean, always thought it would be um, great for school. So we, so I have a call with Dr. Uh, Robinson um, in September. Right. He was away for the summer, but in September- a lot of lives. Yeah, he, his talk was amazing, my God. Oh, that's amazing, yeah. That was amazing. It'll be great. <laughs> um, so we're excited, but Jay Underwood, we still want to do that with you. Because Jay Jay was the teacher, it was a, the headmaster at an amazing school here in the East wow. Village. That, um, oh, awesome. Yeah, it's called um, the George Jackson Academy. It's, they have kids, boy, it's just for boys from underserved communities, really, really smart boys, um, sixth through eighth grade, and their parents pay, some of them pay only $40 a year. Wow. And it's an amazing program. Yeah. Wow. So it's That's an incredible crazy, program. Because I went to a school like that. <laughs> oh, really? I yeah. I went to a boarding school like that that I would never have been able to afford. It was founded by the uh, former president of Motown. And it yeah. just, it makes a huge difference, right? When people like lift you up like that and say, hey, yeah. you know what? And because their kids aren't there, the, the people who are paying for it, their kids are not there. So they, they're not. You know, it doesn't get weird. It's yeah. just um, just helping kids that that awesome. deserve it. Yeah. So anyway, oh. I feel like we're overseeing our time. I didn't realize it was ten after. Sorry, oh. Tom. Not at <laughs> all. Ten minutes. Thanks so much, right? Thank you. Let me jump in here and say thank you to you two rock stars, and oh. thank you for proving me right. And that is, I told the audience at the outset they would leave today a lot smarter and more inspired than they arrived mic drop on that one both of you just absolute I, i'm blown away thank you so much thank to the guys. audience i know you feel the same way you've gotten a healthy healthy dose of karma today so take it out into the world and spread it forward folks keep coming back next week we'll be here at the same time alex and meredith i do have a really interesting idea for you all business wise that has come out of today um uh, wow. so you. That's why we do this stuff to connect Absolutely. dots and, and make Thank things you. happen. I'll be in touch, folks. Stay Great. safe. Thank you, Thanks everyone. Thank, Thank you, Thanks for everyone Thank you Alex. Thank you, Thank you, guys. Thanks for all the great comments. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Come on. <laughs>